the Italian cooking where you see cooking from my point of view. And today we are making brassata al barolo with a little twist. Now, if you've been keeping up with my videos, you'll see that I've had a few videos here where I was joined by members of my wife's team as part of a team building event. Well, this is the last of that series. This is number five. Um, the brassata al barolo was the last thing we made during the day. Uh, and the reason I say with a twist is because traditionally brasada al barolo is made with a beef chuck roast. Well, I put my own little twist on it and I made it with beef short ribs and it turned out outstanding. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's get started. Right, we're going to take a real quick look at the ingredients for our brasada al barolo. Now we're doing a little twist on brasada al barolo because generally this is made with a beef chuck roast, but I'm going to make it today with a beef short rib. Amber's going to help me with this one. So what we've got is about three pounds of beef short ribs. We're going to use two red onions. We're going to watch you cry because you're going to cut those up for me. Okay. Um, we're going to use five or six cloves of our garlic, two stalks of celery, two carrots. we got about eight ounces of pancetta. Do you know what pancetta is? No, no. Pancetta is essentially Italian bacon. The only difference between American bacon and Italian pancetta is it's not smoked. But this is, we're going to use this because we're going to like sweat the fat out of that. That's going to help our vegetables take, taste a little better. As I like to call it, this is a sofrito. So it's kind of the holy trinity of vegetables. Another thing we're going to have is two cups of a basic tomato sauce. And if you look back at one of my earlier episodes, this is the simple sauce that I make. I can't remember the episode number. Just search for simple sauce. I made this this morning. We're going to have two cups of Barolo. Barolo is kind of a higher end Italian wine. This is actually a lower end Barolo. This was about a $30 bottle. So I'm hoping that we don't use it all because I really want a glass of this. This is one of my favorites. And then some salt and pepper. So we're gonna move a few things around. Actually, what I'm gonna have you do for me, I want you to salt and pepper the, um, the short ribs. Salt them pretty generously. Just grab a little pinch. Just about that much go ahead and do all of them on one side and if you can flip them over and do the other side as well okay. so while she's doing that i'm going to move a few things around i'm going to rinse off my celery get my carrots ready to chop up and then when we come back we're going to watch one of these girls cry as they chop up these red onions all right the first step we've got to do our prep on our vegetables and thankfully today i have to do very little prep because i got a whole lot of help in the kitchen so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and chop and get rid of the the white ends on those then we're just going to do like a half inch chop straight across because this dish simmers real slow just slide those off the side anywhere look at her she's trying to be all neat um just go ahead and do a half inch chop on those or four like inch this? That's perfect, just like that the whole way. Okay. And then I'm gonna have you do the same thing to the carrots here, as soon as I get these peeled. So I'm gonna go ahead and take your vegetables while you're doing it. You don't, get, don't have to go any faster, because you, you <laughs> cut your hand off, I'm not properly insured. <laughs> so, doing really good. Next step, we're gonna do the same thing with our carrots. All your vegetables to be about the same size, that way they cook the same. Okay. We have our carrots and our celery cut up. Now, between shots, Amber told me what a secret to cutting red onions, or any onion really, without uh, crying. And what, what's your secret? And you guys chime in and let us know if we're correct about this. But <laughs> supposedly, you're, you're supposed to peel a half onion and slice it in half and place it on the top of your head. So we're going to see if this works. I'm just going to stand back and let the magic happen. <laughs> And see what happens here. Now we want a rough chop on this. Okay. Pieces about like that. Uh, do you want to place one of these small pieces on your head yeah, or a bigger? Need, we, well, this this is a more sized piece. Well, we'll take and, this piece. And it's got the little like squiggy like little thing cap on. So. Right. So it's like it should. So work. you place that on your head. <laughs> <laughs> to my team. So I. Okay. <laughs> where, where, where did you hear about this little secret? It's in a, one of my most favorite movies. It's called like Water for Chocolate. Water for Chocolate. And it, the, the entire movie is about cooking and the passion that goes into food. And supposedly, if you place a cut onion on the top of your head, it'll stop your eyes from watering. And are you sure chop. somebody didn't like lose a bet? Nobody lost a bet. <laughs> 
We're gonna watch the movie tonight before we're, that's a, a part of the team building. We're all right. gonna watch the movie. <laughs> well, while you're cutting that one up, uh, we're gonna see if you're gonna cry, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this one skinned and ready for you. Need a lot of onions for this dish because they do inject a lot of flavor. So, are you starting to feel the, are you crying yet? Feel My your eyes, eyes feel as dry as sand, actually. I think it's working. I think, I think it's, I think it's working. I think it's working. I'm just scared if I set an onion up on my bald head, that it'll stain a spot on my head and it'll always stink, smell like onion, so. Yeah, I don't think Vicky would be too happy with that. No. <laughs> You're doing good. By golly, I think that this is working. I really do think this is, because this is a I, huge onion. I think it is because my eyes are watering and I don't have any onion and I on have, my head. And I have not a tear. Not a tear, that's. So if you had a lot of Italian cuisine, Italian foods, Authentic Italian food? Authentic Italian no. <laughs> um, ready serve Italian food all the time. I, I get it in the grocery store, you Stouffer's, you pop it in the oven, voila. Perfect. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and cut this next onion up. You can go ahead and take the onion off okay. your head. Thank you so much. You're welcome. But I just got to share with you guys the, the comment from off camera is I'm really going to be constipated tomorrow because we have a, uh, a big cheese tray. So just to, wanted you guys to know that. So what I've got here, this is about eight ounces of real thick cut pancetta. And what I want you to do, Jessica, right? Yes. See, okay, I'm learning names. Yay. Okay. I, I want you to do about a quarter inch um, dice on the pancetta for me. Okay. Don't be scared of the knife. I know it looks like a sword. So... What we're gonna use with the pancetta is we're gonna sweat that fat out of the pancetta along with the vegetables and it injects a lot of flavor. You can use bacon in this recipe if you want. The downside of using bacon is bacon is smoked. So you get a little different flavor. So this is gonna inject a lot of flavor into our, uh, our sofrito or our holy trinity of vegetables, carrots, celery, onions, and garlic. So you're doing a really good job. So we're gonna go ahead and get this finished up. And our next step, we'll prep our garlic. All right, next step, we need about five or six, depending on how big these cloves of garlic are. So if you have a full thing of garlic, mm -hmm. if you just put a lot of pressure on it, and push sideways, you can get all of them out. Saves you a lot of time. Can we try that again? I, I really kind of want to do it. All right, grab another. <laughs> this one's smaller, all right. There you go. See what you can do. Put your hand, palm on it and just push. Put your weight into it. <laughs> Don't push straight down, kind of push it in an angle. Push it in the, it's not working for me, wait. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> All right. Come on, it's that hard. was a big fail. <laughs> over here. All right, so for garlic, the skins can be really hard to get off. So what you do with your, to get your skins off is you just crush it, and the skin will come right off. I'm learning so much. See, you didn't know that? No. It makes it really easy. Now, before you cut up garlic, what you want to do, there's a woody end to it, where, where uh, at the bottom, where it comes together at the center. It kind of makes a little woody end down there. Now, some folks will leave that right in their dish. I don't want it in mine. So what we'll do here, let me go ahead. These a lot of these cloves in this garlic are really small. I like a big. See, you just you just got to put. He makes it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> I threw a big one down there. All right. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and I want you to crush all these cloves, and it's really easy. Just. You lay it, lay it flat on here, bring it over to the edge. You can go like that, and that hangs off the edge, and then just kind of, but don't cut yourself, because I'm, again, I'm not properly insured. <laughs> All right, so we've got a real rough chop. How many cloves did you chop up there for? Five. Five? Let's go ahead and do one. These are really small cloves, so we're gonna go ahead and do two more, because we have about three pounds of, um, let's go ahead and, uh, Nah, you're fine. No, you're fine. You're fine. We have about three pounds of short ribs. So if you're drawing about two pounds of short ribs, four or five cloves is going to be enough. But since we've got so many short ribs, we're going to just get a couple of extra cloves of garlic. As I always say, you kind of go with your gut. I don't like to measure. I just kind of go by feeling. And it didn't feel like that's enough garlic, so we're going to chop up some more. So we're repositioned over by our stove. Megan is helping me. I'm going to get these names right. So first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and get the heat turned on here to our Dutch oven. You want to use a real heavy pan for this. Uh, go ahead and get our olive oil and you just want to coat the bottom of the pan really good. Let's say a quarter cup to a third of a cup of olive oil. You don't have to be 
real exact. Just go ahead and just pour it on in there so you got a good coating on it. That's perfect. What we want to happen with our olive oil, you got to heat that up till it's almost smoking. Olive oil has a low smoke point. All right, I think our oil is hot enough to get started. Now, what you want to do is space them out. You could probably put three or four pieces in. Just don't let them touch. We're going to brown these for three minutes on each side. And when I say each side, I mean top, bottom, and all the sides. So go ahead and grab a couple. Go ahead and put them on in there. Actually, what we'll do is let's start with one. Yeah, you just push in on that. If it doesn't sizzle, perfect. That sound is real important. You want to hear that sizzle. So let's go with, uh, if you can get five pieces in there, just grab one of the small ones. Perfect. Yeah, just don't let them touch. If you want to do three, three minutes each side. The reason we're doing this, we're putting a sear on these ribs. When you put the sear on, it's going to lock in all the juice. It's going to lock in all the flavor. That's perfect. So what I'm going to do, set a timer for three minutes. I'm going to timer just so I don't forget. So our meat's cooking away. We've got about another minute. It's real important that you don't touch it. Once you set it in the pan, let it set. Because if you do move it, yeah, you'll still get that sear. But it just doesn't lock in the flavor. So how are you doing on that? we got, what, another yeah. minute? Yeah. And it's, Use a heavy, if you have a nice heavy uh, enamel Dutch oven, that's perfect for this. You don't want to use a Dutch oven that doesn't have the enamel in it. Because a lot of times the, uh, the cast iron, they say if you use a high acidic foods, and we're using Barolo and tomato sauce, they say it can kind of make it taste tinny. Let's, let me see your uh, tongs here for just a second. I've got my heat clear on high here. You know what? Those are ready to turn already. So if you go ahead, we're going to go ahead and flip those over. Turn them over on their other big, there you go, just, that's fine. And we'll go, actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna do these for about, we're gonna do these for about two and a half minutes. That seems to be the sweet, sweet spot. All right, so we'll go for two, two minutes, 30 seconds on this side. And we're just gonna go ahead and repeat this process until we get them all done. So Amanda's gonna help me out with the next step. What we've done is we've rounded our, our ribs. We browned it. I said, did I say browned it? Browned it, browned it. That's Appalachian English. <laughs> what I've done is we've, we've brown, browned, not browned, the ribs. Now there was a little bit of excess uh, grease in the bottom of the pan or excess oil because when we actually brown those, it renders out some of the fat. So I did remove some of that. I've got the heat on. So now next step, go ahead and dump in our onions. We've got about okay. two red onions. Just dump them all right in there. Just dump them right in. There you go, that nice sizzle, that's exactly what you want to hear. I can stand back here because I'm taller than you. Uh, go ahead and dump in the carrots, celery, garlic, and our pancetta. Doing good. Dump everything right in there. And go ahead and give that a quick stir. Now, you want these to soften up a little bit. There's a couple things that's going to happen. We're going to soften those vegetables by cooking them. Got them over about medium heat. And also it's going to render the fat out of that pancetta. Fat equals flavor. It's a real important component. This is going to cook for about eight minutes. So let's go ahead and set our timer so we don't forget. So this is going to go over medium heat for about eight minutes. Stir it every couple minutes. Uh, Amanda, you're doing a good job. Our vegetables have been cooking for about 10 minutes. They're, they're cooked down really well. Amber. Amber. Bingo, got it. You Nobody's got it. wearing a name tag. Actually, they all have names on their back. You guys don't know this. There's <laughs> names on their back. First thing we're going to do is dump in our wine. We have okay. about two cups. Just go ahead and grab your wine, dump it right in there. We're going to deglaze our pan with about, that's a generous two cups of barola. Just dump it right in. Bingo, that's perfect. Then you're going to see, you're going to smell, yeah, go ahead and stir it up. You're going to smell the alcohol, kind of simmer off that barolo. It doesn't take much. Now, we have a lot of ribs. I'm going to go ahead and add probably another cup. That's about perfect. That's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and turn this up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the tomato sauce. This is two cups of my simple sauce. Again, just search on my videos for simple sauce. You'll see it. Good enough, don't worry about scraping it. Okay. Go ahead and give that a stir. We want to bring this up to a boil. And what that boil is going to do is it's going to go ahead and get the, uh, the tomato sauce and that Barolo incorporated. And then the next step, when we come back, we'll go ahead and put our short ribs in. Our Barolo, our tomato sauce, and our sofrito have came to a boil. As you can see, Amanda here, she can't wait. She's like got her head it's over it. She's, really she's getting that, um, you know, a steam. 
Next step is to put all of our short ribs. So if you can just take the tongs there. Look at that. All right, just go ahead and sink the, all, of the, uh, all of the short ribs right down in there. Just work them down in. You're gonna put all of your short ribs in there. Make sure you get them underneath that sauce. Then we're gonna cover them. We're gonna turn the heat way down. And that's gonna cook for about 90 minutes. During that 90 minutes, all of that connective tissue is gonna kind of, I don't wanna say it's gonna completely melt away, but it's gonna render a lot of the fat. It's gonna tenderize that meat. The acid from the wine is actually gonna help tenderize things as well. And this is gonna be an absolutely incredible dish. No, at least 90 minutes. If you can do two hours on the simmer, that's gonna be a lot better. But just cover it up, super low, two hours, and then we'll be back. Our brasada al barolo, or our short ribs and barolo sauce, have been simmering away for, oh my gosh, about an hour and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, Ebony's gonna help me with this step. Now, Ebony, what I want you to do is take that ladle right next to it. What we wanna do is that the finishing sauce is gonna be a, a, a reduced sauce from the, the, the uh, barolo and the tomato sauce and the vegetables. I just want you to go ahead and get some right here in our pan. We wanna take, I don't know, a couple cups of the sauce and we're gonna reduce that and it's gonna be a finisher. There you go. You don't wanna, try not to get any of the vegetables in there. Okay. Ah, you're fine. Okay. If you get some, we, we can always get them back out, that's fine. Okay. So you want about two cups and you're gonna reduce that down to, I don't know, you're gonna reduce it down by a quarter, maybe by a half. Just put it over a medium high flame and just let that simmer. Perfect. And that, that's gonna, by reducing that sauce, we're getting rid of some of the water and it's really gonna make it deep and rich. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna add so much more flavor to what's gonna be a flavorful dish. So Ebony's gonna go ahead and finish getting that done. Put it over a medium to medium high flame and let it simmer down. Now Ebony was like that, you're moving, right? Yes. Ah, uh, fun, fun. <laughs> Nothing worse than moving. And Ebony was our neighbor. She didn't like the neighborhood because we moved in, so she's moving out. Not so. true. Not true. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to go ahead and get this finished up. When we come back, we'll uh, these will be done, and we're going to get them plated up. Our short ribs are finished. Our reduction is done as well. So what we're going to do, let me get the lids off to smell that. It smells good, doesn't it? Mm, That's yes. really good. The short ribs simmered for about two hours. So what we'll do, I'm gonna take one of the short ribs here for you. Put that on our plate. A little bit of our <laughs> pan sauce over top. The ladies off camera are having a good time. They're eating, they're waiting. They want, they're, they're waiting on the short ribs here. So give that a try, tell me what you think. Sometimes that connective tissue in the short ribs can be a little bit tough. Now they did simmer for, for two hours. So tell me what you think. Mm, it's good. Those were killer, okay. I can't wait to try this. These, uh, again, this is Brasada Barolo made with short ribs instead of a chuck beef. You approve? Mm -hmm. Does the little one approve? Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching POV <laughs> Italian Cooking. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Tumblr. Uh, if it's social media, follow me there. Uh, most importantly, Click that subscribe button on YouTube, ring the bell so you never miss an episode, and download on uh, the Roku device, download the POV Italian cooking channel. You're being really quiet. I know, done. I'm over here eating. Right, well, then that's good. <laughs> that, that means it's good. So, again, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ciao.